Now let's talk about the millionaire mountains that you could climb. I want you to draw on your piece of paper three money mountains, three different kinds of ways for you to create wealth in your life. And there are, there are really only three or four. There's just a handful of mountains that you could climb and make a million dollars in, in, in less than a year. These three mountains, as you label them, these three money peaks across the page, I want you to label one of those money mountains the real estate mountain. I want you to label the left-hand mountain the real estate mountain. Got it? Just write real estate on one of those mountains. The second one, the middle one, you're going to write investments. And the, the right-hand mountain, the third mountain, you're going to label the marketing mountain. Now, frankly, there are no other ways. Those are the three ways for you to earn a million dollars. You could marry a million dollars. You could win a million dollars in a lottery. You could steal a million dollars at a bank. But th none of those are the ways that you really have a major control over. If you want to get to the top of a money mountain that you select, then it's going to be one of those three mountains, the real estate mountain, the investment mountain, or the marketing mountain. Now we're going to start on the left-hand mountain. And we're going to draw in three streams of income flowing off that left mountain and draw little three little tiny streams flowing into the lake of prosperity. And there are three ways of making money in real estate that can give you residual income. The first one, I want you to label it number one, and then riding along the side of that stream, you're going to call these streams of income. This, this one stream is going to be labeled streams of long-term real estate income. Just got long-term real estate. It's really the buy and hold real estate is what we're going to be doing here. We're going to buy it and we're going to hold it. Now how can that give us residual income? Well we're only going to be buying resid residential properties. These are going to be homes, single family homes, duplexes, fourplexes, 12 unit buildings, anything that has a tenant in it. You're going to avoid vacant ground. You're going to avoid commercial property, industrial property. You're going to avoid um, anything that isn't residential for now. You may broad branch into that later, but for now as a beginner, many of you or most of you are beginners, you want to stay with something that has the highest probability of success. Okay? Then you're going to select properties within a 50 mile radius of where you live and you're going to be looking for things that you can buy with little or no money down. You want properties that have a break-even cash flow or a positive cash flow. In some of the areas of California, some of the areas of New York City, you're going to have a difficult time finding positive cash flow properties. If you get into other cities, you'll, you'll have less of a problem with that. But I want to look for residential property. I call it, call it buy and hold. One of my uh, partners, Tom, you know, bought a property in 1982 that was a four-unit apartment building, and you know, a couple of years or a couple of years ago, he paid it off completely. There was no more mortgages on that property, and so now he has a beautiful four-unit apartment building, professionally managed by a company that he hires. Tenants are living in it, and every single month he receives a powerful, positive cash flow gushing into his life because, you know. 15 years ago he made the decision to buy that property and hang on to it and he has and now he has powerful residual income flowing in. He doesn't even have to drive by it, look at it for the rest of his life and if he wants to will it to his family for the rest of their lives there will be this cash cow free and clear piece of real estate that will feed his family for, for centuries to come. That's the power of a piece of real estate over a long period of time. So that's buy and hold. The second stream of income is called foreclosures and flippers. So write that down. Foreclosures and flippers. I'm looking for properties that I can flip. Now what does flip mean? It means I'm going to buy them and I'm going to sell them. I'm going to flip them. One of our students took our class in 1990. This has been many years ago now. But taking the class, he was a young man, a professional man, and he was working as a a uh, professional salaried person and he decided that he was he was earning a nice income but it wasn't going to make him free so he spent five thousand dollars to go to a class that we taught back then we no longer teach that class today it was called the wealth training and he focused on one kind of real estate he he, he said you know what I want to do is I'm going to buy properties and buy them in foreclosure I'm going to flip them and I'm going to take my profit in the form of a monthly payment 
For example, suppose the property was worth $100,000. He could buy it for $70,000, $80,000 maybe, $75,000. He would buy it with little or no money down in a foreclosure, in a government foreclosure. Put a little bit of money into it, 1000 or so, and immediately turn around and resell it for $100,000 with a $900 down payment. Now, there are all kinds of people who will buy property with little or no money down. They just don't think they can qualify. And he had made it available for, the, for them, anybody, to qualify for the loans that he had been able to arrange. And so he was able to buy these properties and immediately turn around and resell them within 30 days. And his profit was in the form of that spread between 100000 and 75000 which is what he cost, it cost him to buy it. And he didn't get a cash profit out of it. He took his profit in the form of a monthly payment over the next 25 years. And so the spread between his mortgages and the, the new mortgages that he had created were about $200 a month. And of course, it would vary from property to property. But let's say on average, it was about $200 a month. Now, that doesn't seem like wealth, does it? But guess what? He has done that 800 times. Yeah, 800 times. And so when you flip properties like that 800 times, 800 different properties, you end up with a multi, multi-million dollar net worth and hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in cash flow that are flowing in. And I've got to tell you, this is a powerful way to create residual income. He didn't have to own any of those properties, manage any of those properties, fix anybody's toilet. Here he had tenants that were living in there that became owners, and they took care of those properties. And of course, if they couldn't make the payments, then he just foreclosed, took them back, and re remarketed them again to somebody else. And so that's a, a powerful way of creating residual income. The third way of making income from real estate is what we call tax lien certificates. Tax lien certificates are only done in the United States and only in about 30 states in the Union. So there are 20 states who do not have tax lien certificates. A tax lien certificate is a very interesting animal. It's a, a, an interesting investment vehicle. When you buy a home, your state is probably going to charge you property taxes. And they're going to take the taxes from your property. In California, for instance, it's 1% of the purchase price. So if you have a million dollar house, your taxes are going to be $10,000. If you have a $1,000 or a $100,000 house, your taxes are going to be approximately $1,000. Those property taxes are needed by the government to pay things like, you know, schools and police and firemen and all those kinds of things. They need those property tax revenues. And what happens if somebody doesn't pay their taxes? Well, the government's not happy about that. Your federal government or your municipal government is going to send you out a letter and saying there is a penalty attached now. You you missed the payment and therefore you're going to have to pay X dollars in a penalty. Now, in certain states, the penalty that's paid is a percentage of the amount of money that's outstanding. For instance, in Texas, it's twenty five percent of the outstanding tax balance. So if you owe them uh, $2,000 in property taxes, there's a 25% penalty if you miss your payment of taxes by one day. Well, that's a pretty expensive penalty, isn't it? Well, the state of Texas doesn't collect that money. They, they really don't want to be in the business of charging these penalties. They really just want their money. They want their, their property taxes paid. So they have a system. For instance, in Iowa, they have a system, or if you miss your tax payment, that they'll charge you a penalty of 24% on the outstanding balance until you pay those taxes. And this 24% on the money that's outstanding, they, they don't want to collect it. They really just want the, let's say it's a $1,000 tax bill. They just want the $1,000. And they let us, as investors, come in to Iowa and and, and, and pay the taxes for some of these property owners that don't pay their property taxes. And we get the 24% return. So you go to a, an auction, like I've been to an auction in uh, Arizona where the, where the tax lien certificate rate is 16%. And sitting in that room, we have a lot of different investors who really are bidding for the right to be able to, be able to pay somebody else's taxes. And the, the bidder, you know, usually wins the bid. You know, there are a lot of people in the room, but there's plenty of tax lien certificates available for everybody. 
And you can buy a taxing certificate for $100. You can buy one for $100,000. I mean, it doesn't matter how rich or how poor you are. You can have your money growing at 16% rate of interest right from the very beginning because of what they call tax lien certificates. What's interesting is if I can get my money growing at that kind of rate of return, that's fabulous. But what happens if a person doesn't pay their taxes and, 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 uh, and lose the house? You know, guess, guess who gets the house? You can initiate the foreclosure proceeding because they haven't paid their taxes, and you end up owning a home that you're able to buy for a thousand bucks, and the taxes are, uh, or the uh, the mortgages, all mortgages are wiped off, all liens are wiped off. You end up with a free and clear home for just the amount you paid in property taxes. One of our students has been going to Iowa every year. She and her husband flies to Iowa, and they have a nice little vacation out of it. I don't know what there is to see in Iowa. A lot of cornfields, maybe, but they. They literally buy tax and certificates every year, and twice in the last four years, they've had two of the properties that they bid on for tax and certificates have actually, people have walked away from their houses, and in the, in the last four years, they've purchased, they've taken two houses, free and clear, for uh, a payment of a couple thousand bucks. They end up with a brand new, or not a brand new, but a, 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 a property that's clean of mortgages. They could turn around and rent it out, now, this doesn't happen very often, folks. Don't get too excited, but every once in a while, it does happen. And therefore, you end up with property at, a, at literally pennies on the dollar. So what I'm going to encourage is that all of you think about real estate in a different way. You think about buying and holding. You think about foreclosures and flippers. And you think about tax lien certificates.